Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Welcome to our lesson on solving for x using division. So we're going to have multiplication equations and we're going to solve using division. May sound confusing at first, but it'll all make sense in just a second. So here's our first equation, 5x equals 20. Now you might look at that and say, well, I know 5 times 4 is 20, but if you follow these same steps every time, then it'll make it easier when we get to more complicated equations. And we will get to more complicated equations. So let's go ahead and solve this question following these steps. Step number one is to find our variable. The variable is the letter inside the equation. In this case, it is x. We ask ourselves what happened to x or what is connected to x. x is being multiplied times 5. Now, I don't like using the symbol x to say multiplied times, but it sort of fits here. We're multiplying times 5. We could also write that out. It's multiplied times 5. But we're going to do the inverse, which means we're going to do the opposite operation, which is dividing by 5. Now, the way that we write division is to write it as a fraction. So it's going to look like this. 5x divided by 5 is equal to 20 divided by 5. And that gives us our final answer. 5 divided by 5, they cancel each other out. And we're left with x by itself on the left and 4 on the right. Now, we know that 5 times 4 is 20. But if you follow these same steps, you will be able to solve all the questions, no matter how funky and weird they get. And believe me, they're about to get some pretty funky and weird. Here's one for example. 12.3x is equal to 44.28. This is using a decimal, but it's basically the same equation, so we're going to solve the exact same way. First off, we find our variable. Our variable is x, and what happened to x? It was multiplied times, and I'm going to use the multiplication dot, it was multiplied times 12.3. So we are going to divide by 12.3 on both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. Now with this type of question, when you're doing 44.28 divided by 12.3, you can use long division. Um, personally, I grabbed a calculator, but that was just my lazy shortcut way of doing it. Um, when I'm working with decimals, I always like to check my work. Um, so 44.28 divided by 12.3 gives us that x is equal to 3.6. We followed exactly the same steps, did exactly the same thing, and we were able to get our final answer. Now, we can always check our work by taking this number, 3.6, and plugging it back into the original equation for our value of x. Is 12.3 times 3.6, does that give us the value of 44.28? If so, we've done our work correctly. Now let's look at this one where we have a negative and a decimal. We're going to follow exactly the same steps. Same steps we follow every single time. Find our variable. In this case, our variable is x. It will be for all of our questions today. Find the variable of x. What happened to x? It was multiplied times negative 4.6. So we are going to divide by negative 4.6. You can put those parentheses in there if it helps to separate those ideas. So we're going to divide by negative 4.6. So it'll look like that. Now, when we are dividing negative 4.6, divided by negative 4.6, they will cancel each other out and you'll be left with x on the left side. On the right side, we're taking a positive number divided by a negative number. So we have to remember the rules for dividing positive and negative numbers. Positive divided by a negative gives us a negative result. So x is equal to negative 6.8. Now, um, when I start getting negatives and decimals and funky looking stuff all together, I like to check my work. So again, I'm going to go back to the original equation. 4.6, sorry, negative 4.6 x equals 31.28. Is negative 4.6 times negative 6.8 
does that give me 31.28? And if it does, then I've done my work correctly. Again, a negative times a negative gives you a positive, so we're able to check our work that way as well. Now let's look at our last question. Half of x is equal to 24. Now we're dealing with fractions, but we're going to follow exactly the same steps and see if it works for fractions as well as it did for decimals, positives, and negatives. So our variable is x. What happened to x? It was multiplied times 1 half. So we're going to do the inverse, which is dividing by 1 half. Now, dividing by a fraction is kind of a funny thing because dividing by the fraction is usually written as multiplying by the reciprocal. So instead of dividing by 1 half, we're going to multiply times 2 over 1. That's the, it means exactly the same thing. It's just going to make our lives easier because that's how you solve division of fractions. Now if you haven't gotten into division of fractions yet, then maybe this question's a little bit advanced, but check it out and see if it makes sense here. We are going to multiply times 2 over 1 on both sides of our equation. So you see I've added that to both sides. 1 over 2 times 2 over 1, they cancel each other out, and we're left with just x on the left of the equation. On the right of the equation, we have 24 times 2. 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2. So 24 times 2, which gives you 48. Now think about this. x is equal to 48. Is half of 48 equal to 24? That's what our original equation said. Half of x is equal to 24. Is half of 48 equal to 24? That makes sense to me. So that's how we can check our work and make sure that we've done it correctly. So there's two things to keep in mind. One is the rules for solving equations. You find that variable, ask what happened to the variable or what's connected to it, and do the inverse on both sides. Also, we needed to know the rules for dividing integers. A positive divided by a positive gives you a positive. Negative divided by negative gives you a positive. And then a positive divided by negative or negative divided by positive will result in a negative answer. Hope that lesson's been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.